Alright guys, so I have a little bit of bad news bears for the R32. So I was driving to Arizona, it's about an 8 hour drive. About halfway there, my oil light on the dash came on, and it's never done that before. The gauge sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, so I usually don't pay too much attention to it. I still keep an eye on it, you know, because you should. But the oil light came on, and that scared me. I pulled over when I got a chance, and I noticed that my dipstick down here was actually out. And it was out to like here, and oil just went everywhere you can still see there's some residue on there i tried cleaning it up a little bit but it was all there it was all on the hood here it's just a mess it didn't drain all the oil but it drained most of it so i added more oil checked the level make sure everything was good before i started driving again and i also zip tied the dipstick like that so after that it drove perfectly for the rest of the trip then on the way back the car drove fine and then about 40 minutes away from home i noticed a little bit of hesitation in the throttle it was only like right at the beginning though so if i gave it just a little more gas it felt normal so that was a little odd but i thought you know we're so close to home already we should be able to make it well about 15 minutes from home as soon as i got off the freeway the car shuts off doesn't want to start so i pulled over to a parking lot tried to figure out what the issue was i tested battery voltage battery voltage was good fuel pressure was where it was supposed to be at around 40 psi one thing i did notice is that there was just a bunch of oil here oil on the hood it sprayed onto the windshield and there's just oil in this whole general area last night before i went to bed i took the math out and inside this tube I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. Inside that tube right there is a pool of oil. So that is not good at all. So there's a couple things that would cause that. One is that the PCV system is fucked up and it's letting too much oil go into the intake. It could be backed up and that's why there was so much pressure that it popped the dipstick out. And then me having the dipstick back in and zip tied so it can't come out, all that pressure was just built up and it had to go somewhere. I think at this point, my turbo's fucked and I need a catch can. Regardless, I'm gonna get a catch can. Today, we're going to be taking off all the piping and everything and examining the turbo. If we get far enough, we're gonna check all the spark plugs and we're gonna do a leak down test. We'll see how far we get to today, but hopefully by the end of this video, we have the car running again. Okay, so oil at the throttle body, not good. So I'm gonna make a guess right now. I think that the oil got into the combustion chamber and all the spark plugs are gonna be black. So plugs are out. I know why it's not running now. These are the spark plugs and they are the dirtiest spark plugs I've ever seen. Look at that. That is terrible. Every single one of them is like that. That's why it's not starting. I have no spark. So I'm gonna throw six new plugs in, but before we do that, we're going to do a leak down test because we're clearly getting blow by. Like that's what's going on here. So I'm wondering if it's something with the crankcase ventilation system or if it's the rings are bad. Our dipstick flying out is an indicator of a lot of pressure built up in the crankcase. It's gotta go somewhere and I guess the intake wasn't pulling enough so it came out of the dipstick that is very bad we don't want that to happen so we're gonna do a leak down test and fingers crossed that everything is okay because i really don't want to have to pull the motor if we have to we have to i have a spare motor just gotta clean it up i'll have to swap these cams into the spare head that i have because the spare head that i have has rb26 cams and rb26 cams are slightly bigger than rb20 cams and my stock ecu won't be able to compensate for that i was saving it for my 240 but i don't know if i'm even going to use those cams i got the cams for free so i'm not really complaining if I'm gonna put that head in this motor, then I gotta take these cams out and swap them into the spare head. Well, what sucks and is kind of nice is this valley is so, so clean. Everything on this car seems like it's been very well taken care of. I guess up until I owned it and I started changing stuff. It's got this sticker on for the 100,000 kilometer service. It has some service records in the glove box. To me, it seems like an older person owned this car before me because of how stock it was and how well taken care of the motor and the drivetrain and everything was. I think we just got some bad luck with this whole situation, but fingers crossed that all it is is that something's wrong with the crankcase ventilation system and not the piston rings because I can just get a catch can and get lines and everything for that and call it a day. But I really don't want to have to take this motor out. All right, so I just pulled the fan and fan shroud out because that will give me access to the crank pulley so I can crank it and we can get it to top dead center. So let's do that. We're going to start with number one and move our way back. Okay, so, so far, good news. We're on cylinder one, top dead center. We're putting 100 PSI into the cylinder 
and it's at, we'll say 98. I think each mark is two. 98, so it's losing two PSI, which is amazing. That's less than my 240 loss. My 240 lost, I think. Well, no, my 240 lost two to four across all six. This one on cylinder number one, we're losing two PSI. Okay, so got some more bad news bears on the RB. Cylinders one, two, and three all were great they lost between two and eight psi cylinders five and six were also great they lost between like four and eight psi cylinder four is losing 30 psi and you can tell it's from the rings because you can hear and feel the air coming out of the oil cap and the dipstick hole with a leak down test you can determine whether or not it is an intake valve exhaust valve or if it's the piston rings you can tell that by hearing and feeling in some cases where the air is coming from if you open the throttle and you feel air going out then you know that it's coming from there i can definitely feel and hear coming out of the oil cap and the dipstick tube so cylinder four is toast this road trip killed my car <laughs> thankfully i have another motor that we just have to swap more parts over uh, it's got a new water pump new oil pump i have new pulleys i just gotta swap those out i'm gonna order a new timing belt try to overnight it i gotta clean up all this gasket material off clean up the cylinders a little bit because they're a little bit dirty but essentially everything is going to get swapped onto here i'm going to use my spare head that i have here because i already got it machined and it has rb26 cams but they're a little bit too big for the stock ecu so we've got to swap the cams that are in the skyline now and then that's good to go and i just got to get a head gasket which i overnighted the place is kind of local so i sent them an email and hopefully they respond to me tomorrow in the morning because i'd like to see if they have it in stock if i can just pick it up rather than overnight it so waiting to hear on that i'll hear about that tomorrow i'm going to be getting a new action clutch thanks to socal carbon i figure we're taking the motor out anyways might as well replace the clutch and should come with the throat bearing and i believe the pilot bearing as well not 100 sure but action clutch is also going to resurface the flywheel what's nice about this is all the freeze plugs have been replaced i did a video when i tore this down going through all those kinds of things on it i don't know if that is the stock restrictor or not but if they are not the stock restrictors and they're like the tomei smaller restrictors even better i don't have calipers to actually measure what the gap is but that would be even better to help the longevity of this motor yeah so this is going to get thrown into my skyline i'm definitely going to clean it up don't know if i'm going to paint it might paint it might not but yeah that is the plan so today is a very sad day for the skyline i really wasn't expecting this to happen semi-prepared thankfully i have the spare motor i'm so glad i bought that like I bought it before I got the Skyline, I'm pretty sure. I got it a long time ago. And I've just had it forever just sitting. It was initially for the 240, but because Skyline, same motor, little RB20, we can just swap that in and that should be good to go. Really quick, the story behind this motor is that it was rebuilt and it just sat. And the guy just decided, you know what, I'm not gonna use it. I'm just gonna sell it. Sold it to me for 200 bucks, something like that. And I was like, oh dude, I can't, I can't not buy that. Complete motor. It came with this timing belt. So it also had this timing belt on it this HKS one but if you look at it it's kind of all cracked and I don't really feel comfortable running this I I don't know I don't really feel too comfortable running this I think for now I'm just gonna get an OEM timing belt or honestly whatever I can get the fastest because I like to have everything done this weekend and it's Wednesday so guaranteed get the clutch hopefully we get the head gasket if we can't get the head gasket we can't do it so that would suck. I have to wait till next weekend, uh, which isn't the end of the world, I guess, but it's like, I don't want this car to be down, you know? I gotta clean up and sort of come up with the game plan. I kinda know what I'm gonna do. Gotta ask some people for some help because there's no way I can do this by myself. But anyways, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please drop some Fs in the chat for the Skyline, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.